Hi guys, Kalda is back with another Flutterflow tutorial and today we are going to show you how to set up phone or SMS one-time password user authentication in Flutterflow with Superbase. If you would like to prevent fake account creation while keeping a good user experience in your sign-in flow, verifying user's phone number is one of the most common ways to do that. And today we are going to show you how to do it in Flutterflow with Superbase. Okay, so before we start, there are a few things you need to do in order to set up phone OTP in your Flutterflow project. The first thing you need to do is create a new Flutterflow project, then create a new Superbase project and set up a paid Twilio account. You also need to make sure to enable phone provider in the Superbase dashboard under authentication providers. This will require Twilio setup, which can be found in the Superbase documentation. You'll find all of the links in the description under this video. First thing we'll do in our newly created Flutterflow project is enabling Superbase by going to the settings tab and under integrations click the Superbase enable button. As you can see, we are now prompted to input the API URL and our Anon key. Both can be found in our Superbase project, we should just copy and paste both of them. For this demo, we will be using three different pages. The login page, which will be our initial page selected in the login setup login SMS page, which will be the page where our users will input the one-time password and a dashboard page where we will be displaying our authenticated user's information. Once that is done, we navigate to the settings tab once again and under authentication, enable the authentication. We then select Superbase under authentication type and set our initial page and logged in page. As previously mentioned, the login page is the one where users will input their number to receive the OTP. For that, we will have to create a custom phone number input widget, which allows users to select their country code and input their phone number. The custom phone number component enforces phone numbers to be in the same international format so that there is no chance your users would mistype their number. We'll navigate to the custom code section and create a new widget. Here we used a pubdev package, international phone input, and made some changes to it so that everything works nicely in Flutterflow. You can find the link to the code in the video description. Once we've copied the widget code, we'll set the unchanged callback action with the parameter of phone input value so we can use it later on. We'll also have to set the pubspec dependencies to refer to the pubdev library we are using. We then have to change the copied code so that the component will actually call the callback a function and not just print it in our debug. As the widget was successfully created, we can now go to the login page and set it up. For the purposes of this tutorial, we kept things very simple. We added the newly created custom widget and a button below it which will trigger the OTP sending flow. Once we have the main components set up, we'll navigate to the local page state variable section on the right side of the screen. Set our state field and set it to nullable. This allows us to save the phone number as an input in our variable so that we can operate with it in the later steps. Then we'll again select our custom phone number input widget and open our action flow editor to add an action flow. In the action editor, we will select the first action, which will be the update page state and set its field value. This saves the value from the unchanged callback action as a parameter in our page state value. We must also define an API call to the Superbase, which will trigger the post request to their authentication service. We already created a POST API call to their OTP endpoint with an API key as the header and adjacent body with a phone parameter, which in our case is a string. Then we'll add an action to our sign-in button. First, we'll select our OTP login API call as the first action of the flow and pass the entered phone variable. If the API call does not return an error, we'll navigate the users to our login SMS page. Otherwise, we'll display an error message. We also need to make sure to send the phone number parameter to the login SMS page in order to be able to do the verification.
we must also turn off the possibility for back navigation. Once we've done that, we'll create the components on the login SMS page as well. Again, we kept things very simple for this demo as we used the pre-built pin code component from Flutterflow and added a button underneath it which will allow users to log in. At this point, we're ready to create our custom action that will authenticate our users. We'll again navigate to the custom code section and create a new action. We'll give it a name and paste the code of the action which you can find in the description below. Then we'll enable the return value button and set type to boolean. The first argument should be the token or a six digit code and the second one should be the phone number. None of them are nullable. Then we'll navigate back to the login SMS page and select our sign in button. We'll enable the button disable options, which makes the sign in button not clickable until the users input their code. We will now add the previously created custom OTP sign in action to our sign in button and set the values for both the token and phone arguments. We'll set the token argument to pin code and the phone argument to phone number as well as define the action output variable name to OTP. Then we'll add a conditional log logic based on the value of custom action output. Remember, it will return a Boolean value. So if the value is true, we should navigate our users to the dashboard screen. Otherwise, we should display an error message. Since the login flow is done, we should create the dashboard page which users are navigated to once successfully signed in. For the sake of simplicity, we will just show users phone number and their JWT token. Obviously, you can do whatever you want to after the login flow, but this is our way of checking if we have properly authenticated our users. We'll simply add a couple text components and bind the user's data from our Superbase backend. Now we can test this in the test or run mode, but since the country code picker does not render the flags in the run or test mode, we'll turn off the show country flag parameter in the custom widget code and the flags won't be displayed. If you'd like to test this locally, you can download the code and it should run as expected. And as you can see, the whole login flow works as expected. So that's it for today, guys. This is how you can set up phone authentication with a one-time password in your Flutterflow project with Subabase. Thank you for watching and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more Flutterflow tips and tricks.